Hello, this is John Buck. I'm recording an example for you, uh, showing you how to find the even and odd parts of a simple signal. So this is what we're going to look at today. So finding even and odd parts. So this is for a discrete time signal. If I want to find the even part, we define that the even part of the signal x of n is equal to one half of the original signal x of n plus a time reversed version of itself. So I take the signal, I time reverse it and add it to itself, and then I take the half of that, or I'm sort of averaging it with this time reversed version. The odd part is almost the same, except what I do is I subtract the two signals from each other. And these sig the signal is guaranteed that it will always have odd symmetry. So I take one half of x of n minus x of minus n. And part of the reason we do this is that if it's quick to see here, if, if I add these two, the even and the odd part get added together, well then I have a half of x of n and a half of x of n. So that adds up to x of n. And the negative, or I'm sorry, the time reversed versions cancel each other out. And so we can also sort of see the reason we do this is it says that any signal, for any signal x of n, I can find the even and odd parts. And the other important property is that x of n can be written as the sum of its even part plus its odd part. And some people don't like these curly bracket notations, so sometimes it's the equivalent to write x sub e and x sub o for even and odd as well. So let me show you an example of how this works with a simple signal. Go to a new page here. And I'll also show you how you can uh, draw a simple version of this. So here's our axis. We're going to draw out our signal x of n. Let's start at, say, minus 4. And it'll be 0. Minus 3 still 0, still 0 at minus 2, and then at uh, minus 1 we'll have it be, also the value be minus 1, up to uh, 2 at the origin, up to 3 at time 1, back down to 2, uh, 0 again, and we'll throw in one last minus two. At time four, and then zero everywhere outside of that. So here's my x of n, and to find the even part, what I want to do is add it to itself when it's been time reversed. So one easy way to do that well is to just draw the time reversed version right underneath it. I could go through for each value of n, but sometimes it's easier not to get mixed up if I just flip it around, and let me see, the tallest one here is at 1, so that's going to be at minus 1. So let me draw that first, just to make sure I space it out enough. So this is going to be my x of minus n, the time-reversed version. So this thing that was at 4 ends up over here at minus 4. Three ends up at minus 3 when I'm reversing all the time axis. 2, which is again height 2 right here, ends up at minus 2. This is my 1 was it now at minus 1. 0 stays where it was. So, oops, mistake there. Let me clean that up. So, I'll label these a little more carefully. This one is 2. This one is 3, back to 2. What was it? Minus 1 at n equals minus 1. It's now going to be at n equals 1. What was it? And minus 2 
becomes plus two, three, and four were all zero, and going out beyond that. So this is my x of minus n, and so for each value I need to add these up, and I'm realizing this is going to be uh, a little tricky to do, because I don't leave myself enough room vertically, so I'll have to make a new page for that too. So we can do one sample at a time. Let me make my new page and draw my axes. So for the even part of x of n, we go back and look at the sig two signals. So at minus 4, I have 0 plus minus 2, so that's a total of minus 2 times a half, is uh, minus 1. So we go to the next page, I get minus 1 at minus 4. So we're hopping back here, and this is really unfortunate, it would be better if I'd ma I made an example, I could fit it all on one page. Both, at minus 3, both of them are 0. So I get a 0 here at minus 3. At minus 2, I have a 2 and a 0. So having so I have height 2 here and 0, so the sum of those is 2 divided in half is 1. So I get a plus 1 right here at n equals minus 2. I should label my n-axis here. This is plus 1. And back to the previous page, I get uh, at minus 1, I have a 3 plus, n equals minus 1, I have 3, and minus 1 is 2, so again, that makes, divided in half, makes it 1. At 0, I get 2 plus 2 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. In fact, for the even part, the zero sample should never change, because that's the point of symmetry. And then I could go through the same thing again, but I know it has to be even symmetric. So I'm going to live dangerously and just draw it in, assuming I haven't made any math mistakes. If I were going to be careful, I'd go back and look at my answers, or maybe I'll check it after I'm done here. And then everything beyond this will be zero. So five, six, and so on. So there's my even part of my signal. And again, I can go back and check for the positive times. I have 3 minus 1 is 2, so that divided by 2 is 1. 2 plus 0 is 2, but divided by 1. Divided by 2 is 1. 0 plus 0, and minus 2 plus 0 is, is minus 2, divided by half is also minus 1. So there's my even part of my signal. Just, we can throw in the odd part, too. If I take the odd part of x of n, I take the top signal on the previous page and I subtract the bottom one from it. So I have 4, and then divide by half again. So at minus 4, I have 4. Minus and minus 2 is plus 2, divided by that. Divided by 2 is 1. So if I draw this in, the odd symmetric part will be 1 here at minus 4. At 3, they're both 0, so it stays 0. The difference of the 2 is 0. I'm sorry, at minus 3. At 2, I have 0 minus 2, so that becomes a m 0 minus 2 is minus 2 divided in half. becomes minus 1. I have minus 1 minus 3 becomes minus 4. So that is uh, minus 2 when I divide it in half. Oh, I need to label these axes, so this is n equals minus 2 and minus 1. At 0, I have 2 minus 2 is 0, and that's another clue at the origin, the odd signal should always be 0, because it has to be to, uh, and then it will repeat the odd symmetric version after that, right? So at time 1, I'll have 3 minus and minus 1 is 4, divided by 2, or times a half is 2. So from here, I have, uh, at this time, I have plus 2. I then have a plus 1, a 0, and a minus 1. And I'm actually just drawing those because I'm looking at over here and saying, well, it has to be the upside down or odd symmetric version of that. And then beyond that, it's 0. I could also go back and double check them for the other page. So again, the, the key to doing uh, even and odd signals, let me back up, is the even signal is the signal plus its time reverse thing divided by 2. 
the odd symmetric signal is the signal minus this time reversed version divided by 2. And we can break any signal into the sum of its even and odd parts, which we sometimes write with the EV and OD notation, or XE and XO. And this, when we get later to frequency domain and Fourier transforms, we'll see there's an important connection between even and odd symmetry and real and imaginary parts in the Fourier transform. So that's why we're sort of worrying about it now. Right now it seems a little odd of why would I, unusual, to why would I take the signal apart that way. Okay, so that's our uh, quick tutorial on finding even and odd parts. I know a, a bunch of people commented in the course feedback that that was uh, something that they weren't sure about after class, so here's, here's an extra example to help you out with that. Uh, see you in class.